Good morning, Auburn High School parents and guardians. This is Jeff Gardner, principal of Auburn High School. It is Wednesday, November 17th. I know you see on your screen where it says November 15th. I've got a little um, slideshow I want to show you that we give to the kids in the comments every single day. This is the one from Monday. Um, and of course, this month we're celebrating Native American Heritage Month, and we want to continue to remind our students about that. But we have this uh, calendar that's being shared all around our district. It's called the Cultural Calendar. It's uh, it's pretty interesting because it's letting us know all the different um, aspects of culture around our country, and and we try to share that every day. I know our teachers are are, are making an effort to do that. We want to make a school wide effort, so we kind of remind the kids. You know, this is the week for American education week begins. I don't know a lot about that, but I'm going to find out more often what I tell them. Um, if they have ties to the country of Brazil on Monday the 15th, that was the Republic's proclamation day. And sometimes the kids will come up at lunch and kind of fill in information for us. And that's great. So um, that's not the main reason I'm, I'm emailing you this video, but I wanted to also share with you on Mondays, we let our kids know the status of COVID as it relates to Auburn High School. So I'm going to go and turn my camera off so you can just look at the, 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 the slide here. Um, and this tells you how many COVID cases we've had at Auburn High School over every two week period. Now the two weeks period slide one week at a time. So you're kind of dragging along the previous week that was your new week as your old week. So there's like this overlap of weeks. So when I started sharing this with the kids, it was after we'd had a little spike. I think our number went up to 13 here at Auburn High over a two-week period. And we really started uh, reminding even more and more and more about masks and distancing and that kind of thing. But so far, I think we're doing a pretty good job. We're really making a campaign to get to zero. That's my goal is to get our school to zero. Um, I'm hoping we can achieve that and stay there. But you can see over the last ranges of the last four two week periods or 14 day periods. Our latest one I shared with them on, on Monday the 15th was we've had three. So we actually grew from two from the previous week before, which were the previous two weeks. That felt pretty good. I thought we were poised to make a shot at zero, but now we're gonna have to wait it out. Um, if you do get to um, the dashboard the district has, you can even break it down by schools. You can break it down by how many COVID cases are being contracted in the schools versus outside of the schools. And I wanna just tell you about roughly 92% of all COVID cases that test positive amongst school staff, amongst school students, it's happening out in the community. So I guess my main message is schools are doing a good job. Schools are relatively safe. I'm not happy that we went up to three from one from the previous uh, week, um, but we'll deal with that and we'll continue to remind kids. So every day when they're in the comments, every day when they're in the classrooms, our kids either see verbiage on this, they hear us on the microphones. If you're not feeling well, stay home to protect others. We always want to mask up correctly, do our best to distance. We know that high school kids have more situational awareness than maybe young kids do. So be really smart. Um, and our kids really are. They come in the, the crowded lunchroom. This is usually during lunch A, B, or C. They eat, they get their lunch done most often in 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes. And I notice they get up. Uh, most of the time they're doing a good job busting their tables, but they wander. They wander the halls, they go out in the courtyards, but they're moving around. And that's the time of day we aren't masked up because we're eating and drinking. But I just want to let you know, based on the numbers, um, I feel pretty good about the job we're doing. We're not perfect, but we continually to point you know, fingers our noses to remind kids, make sure their masks are over their nose. And uh, overall, I think it's going pretty well. And then of course, we always wanna wash our hands and sanitize off. And we wanna we want zero out COVID at Auburn High School. Um, on Monday, I also gave them a little bit of a rundown on the type of uh, you know symptoms they may be having at home. Um, and I tried to put myself out there a little bit. Like I told one of the, class, one of the lunches that I did have a, a sore throat. It was on Saturday. And it was a non-school day, but I kind of hunkered down. And on Sunday, I didn't have the sore throat anymore uh, because it was gone within 24 hours. I didn't feel a need to go get tested for COVID. Um, I also know I have allergies. So sometimes that can create a little bit of uh, that post-nasal uh, drainage, which can cause uh, fatigue or not fatigue, but sore throats. So we let the kids know if you have one of these and it's lasting more than 24 hours, you might want to get a test. And also, if you have more than one of these, definitely want to stay home and probably get tested, okay? Now, there's more serious symptoms, I guess you can call them, 
If you're having a fever of over 100.4, um, can't really explain why you have a shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Now we have a lot of stairs around the building. So kids are masked and sometimes they may feel that at the top of the stairs, but if they're hitting their stairs every single day, they should be getting more cardiovascular strength with that. So kind of out of the ordinary type things. Okay. Muscle aches, body aches. Student came up to me in the comments today, said he squatted 450 pounds yesterday in the weight room and he's really sore. Okay, he woke up sore. That probably wouldn't be the type of soreness we're looking for because he knows what the cause was. And then, of course, a new loss of taste or smell. That's always going to alert us to a COVID symptom. So if any of those four fall in there is not a great reason for shortness of breath or muscle aches. Obviously, if you have a fever, or you can't smell or taste, that's a little bit different. But students should isolate at home, get tested for COVID. So we're going to make sure we're letting kids know that on at least a regular, probably every two weeks, every four weeks basis. But we want to really make sure the kids know that what we're about here. And then um, we also share with them each day who's available in the library after school and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting that. I want to share one last thing with you before I close out. And that is um, the way we start our day each day at Auburn High. Now, you know, typically first period starts at 810. And lately we've seen um, a large number of students coming into the building after 810. And Teachers start their teaching at about 8.15. And for students that are arriving late, they're walking to school, getting dropped off late. Um, if there's a way, if you're one of the parents that are kind of seeing that at home, if you can kind of do what you can to speed that up, it's really important for the kids to be in first period by 8.10, 9.10 on late start days, because we really want kids to start their day right so they can end their day right. Once the kids are here, once they're in that very first class of the day for them, the day tends to go pretty smooth for them. So I'm just asking for help from parents right now. Um, if it's tough getting out of your home, uh, getting the kids out of your home, if you can get them uh, to make some adjustments on their end, they're big kids, they know how to do that, I think. Maybe they need to be uh, talked to a little bit more about maybe setting their alarm a little bit earlier, maybe taking care of morning chores the night before. Um, but we really need them in class at the start of the day. And we've been emphasizing that and for the most part, our kids are doing a great job, but we can still see there's a group of students coming in late. And I, I know they're trying their best, <clears throat> but I also think if they made some adjustments on the home front, they could probably even do better. And uh, I haven't started looking at a pattern of kids that are showing up late all the time and seeing how they're doing in their first period class. That's gonna be my next step. Some kids can show up late and do fine academically. Some students show up late and it's really hard for them to engage, but that's my next step. So. Anyway, just a, more of a, a shout out for help on that. And then once they're here at school, they really are doing a really nice job. And hopefully we can continue doing that. So anyway, it is really November 17th. Looking forward to uh, parent-teacher conferences coming up next week. And hopefully you got all the information you need on that. If not, feel free to reach out to your students' teachers via email. And they'll get you set up for that. Have a great day, everybody.